Probably a lot of you have encountered some pulling of fabric at the small of your back and you think automatically sway back, sway back. It is a pretty common fitting problem and today is all about it, how it might be something else, probably something else, and then how to fix it several ways. Pattern work, lots of examples of seeing ill-fitting garments and also the ones that fit correctly. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and this is actually a fitting video and fit can definitely impact the way that you feel about your sewing when you're going through a project you're trying things on and your garment is not fitting the way it should maybe you know how to go around fixing that maybe you don't know how to identify what's causing the problem and this is part of my ongoing series around fitting our upper half there's quite a few videos already up on the channel i started this over two years ago and i've just kept adding different topics onto there so have a look at this series. I'm sure it's gonna help you fit your upper half. Each of these take a long time to make. I try to find the best ways to showcase the issue and the fix and the solution. So you see garments on, you see it with your eyes how it could look. And then I think that could help you see if that is happening to your own sewing. And today is about sway back. Our body has a shape and we all have a type of slight S curve in our back. So we're not completely rectangles. Although I know that some people have less curves on the body, including the back, but a lot of us have some type of slight curves that dips into the small of our back and then goes out towards our bottom. On some people, this might be more pronounced than on others. It might just be the style of the pattern you're trying to conform to these curves where there's not enough shaping, there's not enough contouring for this type of curve on the back. This type of concave shape that goes in at the small of your back can be sort of natural for some people because it's just their shape its posture sometimes you've been a type of athlete and that's just the way that you stand and you live your life so in some people that sway back concave curve going in might be more pronounced than on others and this type of shape is really going to affect the way that the clothes fit on you some patterns just do not have that type of shaping on the back to accommodate for these types of curves how is this going to look usually you'll know how to pinpoint and figure this out quite easily when you have a design a dress a top t-shirt, sweater, whatnot, fits perfectly on the front. You don't have any issues on the front. And just at the back, at the small of your back, you have pulling of fabric, horizontal fold lines and just excess length between the nape of your neck and your waist height on the back. Means that the pattern length of your torso is just longer, but just in the back, not in the front. So that is what is considered sway back. And I'm doing this because this issue can be misdiagnosed when the sway back is actually not the problem, but other feeding issues that might be causing it and might be making it look like that is the problem. And I'm always very suspicious when I see comments about, I need a sway back that's two inches or one and a half inches. I think that is just way too much adjustment. It's just way too much. I think in my opinion, you, a sway back shouldn't be more than an inch, an inch and a quarter tops. And usually a well-made pattern shouldn't need that much more. So if you're needing way much more, one and a half inches, two inches, three inches, there are other things going on with your feeding. I'm gonna mention some other feeding issues that might make you think you need a sway back adjustment when it could not be. So one of them is just having a short torso in general. So you might be petite and you actually might just have a shorter body here. And this will be both in the front and the back. So when you make a garment, the waistline of that garment is just gonna sit lower on your body, which means that as narrow as circumference is gonna end up hitting your mid to high hip, which means the fabric is gonna pull up and create vertical folds on your back but it's not gonna be just on the back. It'll be on the sides and on the front as well. So that's just an indication that the bodice length, whether it's just a bodice has a waist seam and a separate skirt, or it's just a top or a dress has some waist shaping, it's just not correctly positioned for you. In, this, in that case, you'd have to do a petite adjustment and shorten everything all the way around the front and the back. That's not a sway back adjustment. You don't have to be petite to have a short torso. And believe it or not, at 5'8", I've had to do this type of adjustment on some bodices. It's been slight, it's been maybe 3 eighths of an inch. I've had to shorten all the way around the front and the back. I wouldn't call that I need a sway back adjustment. That's just the bodice being too long for my torso. So we all have different length proportions, vertical measurements. We could be the same height with someone else. 
but one of us might have a long torso, short legs, the other one might have a short torso, long legs. It's very individualized. I wouldn't just jump straight away because I see pulling on my back, sway back, sway back, when I might have the same situation on the sides and the front. So that's a thing. Another situation that might happen to people that have a larger chest, larger volume on the front, larger sewing cup size than the pattern that they're sewing, is that because the full bust is pulling the top forward, the full bust is just gonna throw the garment off balance, making the garment pull higher on the center front. It's just gonna push the garment towards the front. And I'm, instead of explaining this, because it's harder to explain and you imagine, I have created a fake scenario where you can see that happening. This is a woven top with darts that fits me well. What I've done to wreck the fit here is just pinch this up higher and just pinch it up tighter so that it would create a scenario where I would need a full bust adjustment. You can see that underneath my bust, I have all this excess ease. So I have all the ease I want at the hips, right? But when I look on the side, the fact that my bust is pulling this up higher at the center front, which would indicate a full bust adjustment. Look at this, look where this hem is at the front and where it's at the back and it's just hiking it up. I've got pulling right here at the bust area, but not down here. It throws the whole garment off balance. And even though I have all this ease here, it's just pushing the back forward this way and making it look tight around the hip area. And then in consequence, I would have some pulling on the lower back there because the back in the same way is trying to hike up, find a smaller place to lie. So that is what could happen if you need a full bust adjustment. You haven't considered that. You have this situation where it's pulling higher, it's throwing the whole garment off balance where you have all this space here, but it's still tight at the back of the hips. Pulling up here could be an indication that you need a full bust adjustment and the sway back that you think you need has nothing to do with it. It's a bust feeding issue. It's not a back problem. It's not a sway back. It's just the garment being pushed towards the front where you have all this excess of ease in the front, but it's pushing tighter on the back, going riding up on the hips and getting pulling there on the lower back. It's not sway back, it's just needing a full bust adjustment and sorting out the feet on the front. So let's see how the proper fit should be. Same top, I just undid all my pinning and all the fake scenario I created so you can see. Now I have my top back to how it's originally made. <laughs> originally has plenty of ease, a woven fabric. On the side, you can see that the feet is normal now. I don't have that excess here and the pulling towards the back. I have the amount of ease I'm supposed to have. I don't have any pulling around the lower back. The hip ease is perfectly balanced between the front and the back. And that's how a top should fit. And this is how this one does fit because it does fit my bust cut properly. I have bust darts there. So this is a well-fitting top for my bust cup size. So that the scenario I showed you before, is what could happen if you need a full bust adjustment, but you're incorrectly diagnosing that as a sway back. Now, the most common culprit of you thinking you need a sway back adjustment is actually just not having enough ease at the hips. The types of body shapes that are gonna have this problem more frequently are hourglass or triangle shapes. Sometimes on an hourglass, the hip is balanced with the bust and the waist, and you usually use just one size for the whole thing. But sometimes that can shift a little and it's a little extra on the hip then on the waist and you think, oh, that's enough. I have an inch of ease, I'll be fine. And you don't blend out to the next size. Now, if you have a triangle body shape where it's narrow on the top, wider on the bottom, and you know that you usually have one or two differences of sizes between the waist and your hips, and you think, oh, it's an A-line skirt, I'll be fine, I'll j I just won't blend sizes. Then you might find that when you actually wear the garment, it's just gonna be tight around the mid to full hip, fabric is going to ride up trying to find a smaller circumference to live on and then you'll get all that pulling and excess fabric around the small of your back. So I have one top to show you this as an example. I made a top at the end of 2020 I believe. Back then my hip circumference was one inch smaller than what it is right now and I remembered that scenario because I tried to wear that the other day and it was creating the sway back but it's not. 
So let's see how that could look when you just don't have enough ease at the hips. Here's an example of a top that's sort of loose, it should fit fine. I'm just bringing this out so you can see the scenario. I made this a couple of years ago when my hips had one inch less circumference than they do now. At the moment, I still have a bit of ease at the hips, but it's not much if I try to pinch on the sides. I probably have one and a half inches of ease in total at the hips, which is definitely not enough, especially when you move around. The fabric at the back is gonna hike up and want to find a smaller place to lie, especially when you walk. You can see if I stand still and just stretch this down, the fabric is gonna lie nicely. But then if I start walking, it's just gonna start riding up right there. And then you think, oh, I have sway back. That's what I have to do. I have to reduce length. But it's actually the fabric just pulling up on a smaller space of the body because that's what the fabric wants. It just wants to find the higher place to rest. A lot of the time, it's just about not having enough hip ease. If this was even tighter, that pulling would be there permanently. In this case, I'm able to like straighten it out a little bit if I stay <laughs> frozen. But when I move, it's just gonna start riding up. So easy fix. I have some seam allowance to let out here. I didn't trim all of it out when I made this one. So I'm just gonna let out the seam allowance both sides and we'll see the difference it makes just to have one extra inch of ease and how this is going to just fall nicely and it's not going to form all that pulling right there. So I did this just the other day. I went to my sewing machine and I just laid out the seam allowances on the side. If you have enough seam allowance left in there, this was a big four pattern that uses five eighths. I didn't actually trim those seam allowances down. I just left them there and because I did that, I was just able to let them out by a quarter of an inch on each side. So that gives you an extra inch basically. You get half an inch on each side and that extra inch of ease made all the difference where when I was moving that fabric was not riding up anymore and I could have that smooth look on the back. It's still boxy, there's still a lot of room but I'm just not getting that pulling I was getting before. That could have been considered sway back but it's not. It's just not enough space at the hips. Okay, I've just gone to the sewing machine and laid out the seam allowances here on the sides by a quarter of an inch. When you do that, you end up adding extra half an inch, extra half here, you get an extra inch, which is as much as I could do. And now if I try to pinch the sides, I can grab on to a nice amount of ease right here now. It's about two and a half inches, which I think is a bare minimum you want for a woven top like this. So I'm not expecting to have that pulling on the back anymore. Look, look how nice and smooth that is. I I still have all this excess space, but it's all vertical, you know, it's just because I don't have any darts or shaping. But when I walk now, this fabric is able to stay at my mid hip and not start riding up and creating all that pulling I was having before. I get a really smooth look now, even with moving around. And that just indicated I needed more hippies and zero sweep, sway back adjustment of any kind. So think of all of these scenarios. If this is something that's happening to you, Check, are you sewing a pattern that doesn't cater for your bust cup size? Are you not blending out to your actual hip size? Maybe you think your hips are smaller than they are. Some people just have a lower hip line and the wider circumference is sort of more on the upper thigh than on the typical hip where a lot of people measure. Pretty standard measurement for the full hip if you measure from the waist down is seven, eight, nine inches. But there's some people that have the fullest part a little lower than that and it's not on the bottom actually it's on the upper thigh area it's just body shape it's just genetics so sometimes we're not measuring at the fullest part of the hip when we take our measurements we're measuring a little slightly smaller like it'll be fine it'll be fine but sometimes it won't be fine it'll create that pulling when you move around and you might not be happy with the fit of your gum when you are looking at liner and different styles that a garment could have it could help you see what styles are gonna be easier for you to adjust that back waist length, if this is an issue that you're having frequently, where you just have a shorter distance between the nape of your neck and the small of your back. So if you think that you actually do have this situation happening where patterns are just drafted a little longer in that section for you, there are styles that are easier to adjust and get a really good fit. And they've all got to do with seams. <laughs> Seams are not a bad thing, they help shape the garment to our body. Our bodies are not a rectangle, so we do need some seams there. And I think the easiest garments to get a really good fit with are the ones that just have a separate bodice and a separate skirt. So you have a waist seam all the way around. When you sew a test garment, you'll easily be able to identify if you have that excess material on the back. So I want to show you an example of a dress I have has a bodice seam, a different type of waist seam, it's a slightly A-line skirt 
and I want you to see what a good fit looks like. That is what we want. This is what I want with all of these styles of dresses. These feet and flare dresses are my favorite. I think they suit me the best and they are always the best type that I could get a really good fit with. With some of them, I don't need to make any adjustments to the back bodice length at all and with others I do. It doesn't mean that I have a chronic sway back situation going on. It's just the design, the drafting, the pattern maker, what their standard is for a bodice length. So you'll see all sorts, but I want you to see what a good fit looks like. This is a fit and flare style dress made in a knit with a fitted bodice, has a separate bodice and a separate skirt. And this is a good fit that I want to show you how it could look. You can see the waist seam is right horizontal across my front. I don't have pulling up, meaning it's not fitting my bust correctly. This is fitting my bust correctly. So that is nice and smooth. The length of the bodice is exactly at my waist. You can see right there, it's not lower, it's not higher, it's just right. And at the back, we also have a seam that is right where it has to be at the correct height right there. I don't have any excess pulling right underneath that, which would indicate I don't have enough space at the hips. That's just nice and smooth. I don't have excess length over here on the back. It's all very well drafted and contours the back shape really, really well. So when I make a dress like this, this is the fit that I'm aiming for. It's all very nice. I don't have excess length on the bodice at the front, nor the back. I get that beautiful contouring on the back that's smooth without excess fabric anywhere. The dress fits my hips. <laughs> this is what I'm aiming for when I fit a fit and flesh style, whether it's a woven or a knit. I want the waist seam to be smooth all around. If you look at it from the side, it's not going to be high or lower anywhere. And all the fabric above and below those seams is going to be smooth without excess or pulling. Now I want to show you a similar type of style. Same waist seam, all of that, but I do have excess length at the back and I want you to see how that looks like. And I didn't pick this up when I made it, when I modeled it for you. I picked it up later as I was wearing it. So it can happen to all of us. Here I have another fit and flare dress I made a few years ago. This one has a rectangle waistband between the bodice and the full skirt right here. Sometimes a detail like that can throw off your fitting because it's really hard to gauge how that's gonna fit on the body. But let me show you what's fitting right. <laughs> At the front, you can see that this rectangle waistband is nice and straight. This is fitting my bust correctly. I don't have this situation going on, which would happen if the pattern was drafted for a smaller like, bust cup size and the volume of my bust is pulling it up. That's not happening here. It's all nice and smooth. The middle of this waistband <clears throat> is right at my natural waist. You can see that really clearly there. So everything is fine at the front, but there's something going on at the back. The waistband is straight here. It's not tilting any in any way, shape or form. I don't have pulling here on the bottom on the skirt area. The skirt fits fine. I don't need to touch that area right here. On the bodice, I do have this excess fabric. Can you see right here? And it's just right there. It's not on the sides. Sides are perfect. It's just here, which means I need to shorten my bodice a little bit just in the center back, tapering to nothing on the sides. And this is what I would call a true sway back adjustment for this pattern. It's not much. It's about five eighths of an inch that I could pinch away right there so that I could have a smooth fit. I really hope you can see what I'm seeing because I've seen it ever, ever since I made the dress and I didn't notice this when I made it. I noticed that after a while, after I started wearing it, that this was happening right there. Okay, here is the dress inside out. It's not the best look, but I really want you to see everything that's going on here. There's a seam that's enclosed there. There's a seam holding onto the skirt right there. Waist is right where it has to be. The back, you can see the skirt is absolutely fine, but all the excess is coming from up higher. You can see that the adjustment I need to make there is quite mild. I don't think it's more than five eighths of an inch, which I think is an appropriate amount to correct the pattern. As I mentioned before, if you are needing to do huge sway back adjustments, I would think not once or twice, I would think three times about what I'm doing and why this is happening. This is the reason why I like doing a test garment with bodices because I want to see that. I want to see how that fits on the body. And with a woven, it's so much easier because you don't have the vertical stretch factor to consider. But with a knit, it can be a little different because different knit fabrics have different vertical stretch and that can affect the way that this ends up fitting on the body. So with this dress that didn't fit correctly, this is an ITY with a lot of stretch. Maybe if I'd made that dress in a fabric that had a little less vertical stretch, I wouldn't have had that issue. So it's a bit of a gray area when you're fitting knits, but it definitely can happen that you have a amount of vertical folds 
and pulling there on the bodice. When you have a dress either woven or neat that doesn't have a bodice seam, so you have the same pattern piece from the shoulder to the hem, but you have princess seams and you have a vertical seam on the center back that is giving all the shaping at the waist to go in. And that's gonna sort of anchor the dress at the smallest part of you and then come out at the hip rather than having just something boxy that could end up moving and riding up because there's no shaping at the waist to anchor it. So whether you have some darts or princess seams or some type of shaping, it's always gonna be a better fit and it's always gonna be easier to correct if there's a small sway back adjustment going on or there might just not be the issue <laughs> because of all the shaping. So let's see what a nice fitting dress like this could look like. This is a fit and flare dress in a knit. The print doesn't allow you to see all the seams that are going on here. There aren't any horizontal seams that separate the bodice from the skirt. It all goes from the shoulder down to the hem. The fit is really good because there are lots of seams that gives shaping right here. There's some panels under here with princess seams on the front and the back. There's also a center back seam. It's well shaped. The shaping going in at the waist is gonna anchor the dress in its place where it has to be. And it's gonna follow the curves that we have naturally on the body. You know, we have a body with a shape on the front and the back. We all have some type of S curve right here, some more pronounced than others. I don't think mine is super pronounced, but I, it is there. You can see the, the back going in, then going back out. And this dress follows that shape beautifully without needing that horizontal seam. There is a vertical seam on the center back and all of the shaping going on, but I'll show you how this looks inside out so you can see. Okay, here's the dress. You can see these panels on the side, front and back, a type of princess seam, but a lower one, it's not on the bust. This has darts incorporated there that give all that shaping on the side right here. Enough space for the hips right here. This is not a bodycon dress, it's more of a fit and flare. And then at the back, that shaping is also gonna get rid of all excess fabric that could lie around the smaller part of your back. Center back seam also really helps a lot. You get really nice contouring there with all those seams, a great fit and no pulling right here. I've always liked fitted bodycon dresses and usually when I sew them in the past I have sewn vertical darts, fisheye darts on the back just to bring it in at the waist a little and, and anchor it there. I always make sure I have enough ease at the hips which is at least zero ease, that's the tightest I ever want to go. Kate from Pattern Emporium, a lot of her fitted neat dresses have a horizontal seam on the back that contours the back shape with the skirt that goes underneath and the fit is just just marvelous. Let me show you how the Flossom dress fits. It's an amazing fit and it's all due to that horizontal seam that you have on the back and I think if you see a seam there don't be mad at it. It's awesome it's just gonna make your dress fit so much better here we have a really fitted neat dress it goes in at the waist it goes out at the hips when you see the pattern pieces you do see the shaping there there's just enough ease to fit my hips without the fabric trying to find a smaller place to live and bunch up here on the front and the back i think the fit is great and i'm going to show you why this is happening at the back and at the back the feet is super good as well it's all really really smooth right here i don't have pulling of fabric i don't have this riding up when i walk there is a horizontal seam here creating contouring the seam is right where my waist is at the back at that height and then that creates a curve on the back it also creates a curve on the skirt piece that goes below it so these are rectangles sewn together. There is contouring here. So I'm gonna put this inside out so you can see that seam. Okay, here is the dress so you can see. The front is simple, no seams right there, but it does follow my shape very well. The back has that seam right at my waist at the back, and that seam creates a contour that's gonna allow this to fall smoothly without getting excess bunching or pulling right here. And that would happen when you have something fitted trying to conform to this type of curve. Kate from Pattern Emporium frequently does this type of back seam to her fitted designs like this because it really does improve the fit. I definitely think for a fitted dress like this you should have some type of seam, either one like this or one going down. And then you have styles that have a vertical seam and you can see this on woven tops, you can see this on knit dresses, sometimes the vertical seam is not there and when I see a dress without the vertical seam and it's meant to be fitted I know 100% I'm going to have back fitting issues there because that seam needs to be there if you want to have a nice fit on the back. As I said, you know, it dips in slightly for some, more for others, and that seam that has shaping on the back is always going to help. So I want to show you my Tessa sheath dress from Love Notions. That one has a vertical seam. 
With that one, I actually did do a small sway back adjustment to that seam, and I figured that out by measuring my pattern. I knew I had to do it from the get-go, but it was only slight. It was about 5 eighths of an inch as well. The seam continues there. It's just got a little bit more shaping than the original one, and you can see how good the fit is here. This is another fitted sheath dress in an athletic knit. I might have about an inch or two of these at the hips right here, so it's not super fitted. Though over here, it's more fitted to negative ease around the bust. And at the back, we have a center back seam right here. The original dress has some shaping on the center back seam, but when I made this dress originally, I thought I still had a little bit of pulling right here at the lower part of my back, which meant I just needed a tiny sway back adjustment just to make the curve of that seam a little bit more pronounced for my body. It wasn't an issue of having no space at the hips or anything like that. You can see the dress inside out, white, the black seams, and you can see what's happening at the back there with that center back seam. Very helpful to get a good fit on a type of dress like this. If this dress originally at the small of my back, I had a tiny amount of fabric hanging on like this. It just meant I needed to fix that area there. This is one that's already been fixed, so it's nice and smooth. So while these styles I mentioned, you might have sway back fitting adjustments, I think they will be harder to find and easier to manage and easier to correct when you have all these types of seam lines, horizontal seams, vertical seams, princess seams, that any shaping feature is gonna help you. Styles that are gonna exacerbate this issue are just the boxy styles that don't have any shaping at all where it's meant to be sort of semi-fitted, but you don't have a center back seam. Yeah, red flags immediately for me. And I want to show you an example of a dress. It's my own fault. It's not a dress originally, it was just a top. The top fits fine, I lengthened it, and I knew I was gonna have a fit on the back that wasn't gonna be perfection. It's on the fold, there's no seam, there's no shaping, so let's see. This is a semi-fitted dress in an athletic knee and the problem I'm having is a little bit my doing. <laughs> this originally was not designed to be a dress, it was just meant to be a top. Hitting the mid hip, all I did was lengthen it, keeping that curve sort of straight from my fullest part of the hip down. And the original top of course doesn't have a center back seam, it wasn't part of the design. The tops I made from this pattern fit absolutely fine. But because I lengthened it, I get this little excess right here. There is no seam on the back, there's no shaping, not horizontally, not vertical. Fabric is on the fold, so there's absolutely no shaping there. And when I walk, when I move, I do get this little excess right here. You can see it, I can see it. If I wear a layer blazer on top, it's not gonna disturb me, but I know I do want to fix the pattern I made if I wanna make this a dress again. I do want to create some type of contouring and shaping right here either keeping the fabric on the fold and doing it or adding a center back seam. So we'll see that on the pattern piece and how the next one that I make is gonna be much better and I'm not gonna get this situation there. It's not a problem of my hips not fitting, everything's fine, it's just the lack of shaping basically, which is really important. I know I could correct that and get a better fit. I am able to do a sway back adjustment and keep the dress on the fold for the next time I make it or I just might wanna have a seam there to give it a better shaping. I know I can improve it, but for now, the dress is already made. I'm not gonna go and fiddle with it and change it. I'm just gonna wear it like it is, and that's it. <laughs> I wanna show you also on a fitted tank top that this is happening as well, and I knew it was gonna happen, and I made it anyway just to show you so you could see. This is supposed to be a fitted tank top. It's made out of rib knit, it has a lot of stretch. The negative ease around the bust and the waist and the hips is quite a lot, about three to four inches. Meant to be like this for the style. You can see that this is correctly placed on the front for my waist. The height of this, where it goes in and then comes out is fine. I have the fitted hips that this is supposed to have. And at the back, I know I'm gonna have some excess pulling at the small of my back right there. That is really expected. And I can pinch a little bit out right there from the center. That is what I'm going to take into account to change my pattern piece. This back is cut on the fold, so I'm going to keep it on the fold and I have enough seam allowance on the sides to play around if my pattern piece changes a little. Now that tank that you saw me fitting is the Summer Basics from Love Notions. I've used this pattern in the past to make the dress and the dress is perfect. It's got an empire line type of bodice and then an A-line skirt. So with that type of style, you won't really get the sway back fitting issues if you get the fit of the bodice correctly. Uh, this is not meant to hit the waist, it's meant to hit above the waist, which is smaller for a lot of us. And then the A-line skirt is gonna have enough to just skim over your hips and you're not gonna get that pulling there on the small of the back. 
I knew for the dress I was absolutely fine and I've made that dress twice. But for the tank, I've never made the tank before and I know I want to make a few basic tanks. I wanted to go through the fitting with you. At this point, I don't have a finalized tank to show you, but I know that the one I'm going to make is going to fit nicely because I'll be doing a sway back adjustment. I'll be keeping it on the fold. And you'll see that eventually styled over things. Summer Basics is a feature Friday pattern for today Friday, if you want to grab that. It's called Summer Basics because it is a Summer Basics. I really do need some tanks. I like to lay a shirt on top and I'm always missing out on the tanks in the right colors. For example, I don't have a basic white tank and I really do need one. I also need one in navy. I will be making those soon and when I do, I'll be referring back to this video and how I did the sway back adjustment to get the fit that I needed there. Don't forget to check out the Summer Basics tank and dress feature Friday today, only $5 at Love Notions. Find my affiliate link and, and the content I've made around it down below. Now that you've seen all the examples, what can cause it, what styles are better and what styles can make a sway back more evident, we're going to see some pattern work, very easy. You'll see it's so, so, so easy to do. We'll see this how to do it a few ways. You can keep them on the fold or you can just keep that center back seam there. So it'll be really practical with a method that works very well. A little controversial in some aspects, but you'll see all of that next. This is the bodice of the dress where I had a little bit of excess at the center back. And I've placed this on the fold right along the line of my cutting mat. And then I've matched that up to a line here. And you can see that there's a slight curve in here. This bodice is not exactly a rectangle. It does have some contouring right there. You can see at the center back, it's slightly shorter there compared to the line that it reaches at the side seam. But I do need to take away some length at the center back according to the feet of my dress. And it's only slight, it's only about 5 eighths of an inch. So I've drawn a line from the center back over to the side seam, but not to the raw edge of the paper. I've drawn my seam allowance. In this case, this one is only a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to have a little pivot point there. I cut up to that dot and then from the edge up to the dot right there. So I have a little bit of paper there. I don't want to take away from the bottom because that might mess up the waist length right there to attach to the skirt. So I'm always trying to do it a little above the bottom right here. I'm drawing a line about three quarters of an inch above. I'm just going to draw a dot with the adjustment I need. Five eighths of an inch is right here. So all I'm going to do is take this and move it up. That little pivot point is going to allow me to do that and it will go right up to there. Now let me align this back onto the line so you can see that the distortion here on the center back on the fold was minimal. This is only a short bodice. The adjustment wasn't that big. So maybe you can see in there, I went in about an eighth of an inch. So it's not a straight line there. There's a little jog right there. What I consider a pattern, I find that negligible. <laughs> what did change though was here. You can see the side seam at that line. It goes like that. You could see it's quite nicely curved right here. Now what I want to do is just make sure I get a 90 degree angle on this area for about an inch so that I don't get any type of pointy situation there. So I'm going to align this right here and I'm just going to draw a straight line for about an inch and then I'm going to just smooth out that curve. I want it straight for about an inch right there and then I'll continue over here so that when this is on the fold this way I'll have a straight edge right here and I won't get a type of V or something going into the center right there. You know, if I wanted to be really nitpicky, I would go ahead and put paper right here and fill up that eighth of an inch distortion that I got right there. It's nothing in the grand scheme of things. It is absolutely nothing. I would just place this on the fold just like it is. So there we have the bodice on the fold. This is where I did the adjustment and you can see it goes in there like an eighth of an inch or less and then it goes back out there. When I place this on the fold again on the fabric, that won't be noticeable. I'll still place it on the fold. It will make absolutely no changes, at least with this small adjustment of only five eighths of an inch right there. That is literally all I do for a neat bodice like this. It would still stay on the fold. It would have the adjustment that I need here, shortening the back. The side seam stays the same. Remember that didn't change. That would be all. Now let's say our adjustment was much more, it was an inch. So let's measure that inch. Remember I mentioned that it was like the maximum I would be happy to do. <laughs> An inch and a quarter maybe. So let's just bring it up all that amount. And in this case, when the adjustment is larger, the distortion on the center is going to be much more noticeable. So I would fill in the paper right there and adjust that and just straighten that out. 
You can see that this went jagged as well a little. I would just straighten out that side seam. Okay, here we have another back pattern piece. In this case, we already have a center back seam that already has shaping right there. As you can see right here, I'm on a line of my cutting mat, goes all the way over there. You can see that at the waist height here, it goes in a little bit. We also have a dart. You could have a dart or you could not have a dart. It will affect the positioning of this dart after we, we do the sway back adjustment. So all we have to do here is find the smallest part, which is the waistline right here. That's easy to find. When you have just one full piece and you don't have a separate bodice, you can do the adjustment at the waistline because that's where you need it. So I'm gonna just draw a line across like this. From the side seam, I'm gonna draw a dot for the seam allowance because I don't wanna cut all the way through. With this type of sway back adjustment, we are going to be keeping that center back seam. It's already on the pattern. It already does have the shaping. It's just gonna become a little more pronounced than what it was. We have the line, we have the pivot point. Again, I'm just gonna measure how much I want to remove from the center back length. Let's say it's 5 eighths of an inch, which would be a typical adjustment for me. I'm just gonna draw that line right here and bring it over. Again, this didn't affect the side seam. Remember, we're not changing the front piece. The front fits fine. It's just on the back and it's just right here. If I align my pattern again on one of these lines, you'll see that the shaping increased even more right there. And that is what the sway back does. It just creates more shaping and reduces the length right there. I had an original grain line mark. If I take the bottom one as a reference, it goes up to there, but then it came in, so it sort of swung this way. So I do want to fix that because when I place my pattern piece on the fabric, I do want the grain line to be correct. The larger the adjustment, the more it's gonna just change. So you do wanna change that so you place it correctly. And also this dart, this dart just came this way a little bit. I do wanna straighten this out. So I'm gonna put my ruler through the middle of the dart, taking the bottom dart legs as a reference right here. So that red line now is my new dart point. Just redraw the dart legs on the top so that the dart makes sense and it's not all crooked and wonky, which happened when we did all of this. Okay, I have aligned carefully my pattern piece along the line here. You can see what the adjustment was. Now, this is where it gets a little controversial because there are lots of people that say that you have to add back the length over here at the bottom. You can see the line is on this line of the cutting mat and then it goes a little shorter at the center back right there. But if you just add back the length that you took, you're sort of just taking away the adjustment that you made right there. So I don't add the length back. That's not something I would do. It's nothing I've ever seen on a serious sewing book that you need to add back the adjustment. Remember, the length of the bodice was too long for your body, so why would you add that length back in? <laughs> I would just make sure that in this section I have at least a little bit that is at a 90 degree angle so that it's straight right here and it doesn't go up into a little V. So I'd get my ruler again and just draw this 90 degree angle here. And also over here. And then it's a very slight adjustment. I would just join that up. And even though it looks like it's a little curve right here, it does look weird on the pattern piece. When you wear it, it's gonna look straight on the body. It's not gonna be shorter at the back. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> you can see tutorials online that will say to add the length here. Others will say do not do it. I'm of the thought that you don't add that back on right there. This is another back pattern piece. This one is made to be on the fold. This is how it was originally. There are no darts, nothing like that, and we have a sway back situation going on. So the same as you saw me do with the previous version, I'm gonna draw a line just across the waist at the smallest part right there, because that's where you need the adjustment. Again, I'm gonna mark the amount that I want to remove right here from this line. I'm keeping it consistent at 5 eighths of an inch, and then you would swing this over, bring it over and meet that. So I've placed this along the line. This is where it used to be on the fold and now it's coming in there at the small of the back. Now, if I was working with a really busy print, if I was doing a woven, if I didn't really mind having the center back seam, I would keep it just as it is. And all I would do here is add seam allowance here following the shape. And I would be a very happy camper and I would just sew my center back seam and call it a day and that would be it. Now again, I want to fix this grain line because it just went all wonky, fixing it up here on the top. 
but if you really want your garment on the fold if there's no way around it <laughs> i have some green contrast paper now all you would do is put this on the back fill up that gap that your adjustment gave you and then this would allow you to put it back on the fold now what you can see is that this adjustment added width i think in many cases i would welcome that extra ease around this area especially that extra ease around the hips so if you thought you needed that extra ease or you would welcome that tiny amount of ease for me it's not a lot of ease i wouldn't really want to bring it in but if you really did want to bring it in let's bring it in on the sides in the same amount right here and then over here i will just hand draw that out and then i would cut this excess away to end up with the original circumference that you had right there and that would be the whole adjustment then i would be able to put this on the fold and be happy and the fit would be improved right here because it, you would have a shorter area in the small of the back where you need it again there's a hem situation i'm not going to add the amount i took off here because if i did that it would be like i did nothing at all it basically would just eliminate all this adjustment if i went ahead and added that back on the piece would go back to the original that you had in the first place i hope this was helpful i hope you look at this adjustment with a different view now look at the factors that might make you think this is something you need maybe you can correct those and maybe you still need a sway back adjustment but it will just be a minor correction it won't be a huge correction that will distort the pattern a whole bunch i hope your next garment fits so much better don't be scared of the center back seam if you need to have one there for your feet there's nothing wrong with having a center back seam i like them i know if i have one the fit is going to be so much better so if you need to make a sway back correction that creates shaping maybe you want to leave it there maybe you do i i would <laughs> just depends on the print and how much disruption you want to the print but it is perfectly acceptable to leave a center back seam on any style even a t-shirt that's just my take i'll see you again soon on this channel with more sewing bye mm -hmm.